Yes, sir. You just got to steal the draft. Yes, sir. The NFL draft, where college football's best are selected over seven rounds. A time where all the hard work, all the hours in the gym, film study, execution on the football field on game day are celebrated with each and every pick. For many, the momentous emotions of pure joy can hardly be contained. However, the Bears national scout, Chris Prescott, is no longer with the team after making comments about second round pick Jaquan Brisker. Okay? Prescott said of Brisker, according to ESPN Bears reporter Courtney Cronin, here's a quote He's a what would we call it, PhD, poor, hungry, and desperate. Football is his life. This is his, it, this is this kid's life. There's a lot to like about that when you see a guy who's so passionate about football, end quote. Man, if that's what they're saying in public, what is being said behind closed doors? I mean, it's amazing that Brisker has overcome adversity and he should be championed. But to reduce his story to a draft attribute like a 40 time is to reduce who he is as a human being. Um, this is something I think we've all been complicit in, uh, including the media uh, in our word choice, the presentation of stories. But it's 2022, and by now, we should really all know better. ESPN's Mina Kimes put it quite well in her assessment. Alas, Max Kellerman stated Chris Prescott was fired by the Chicago Bears. Longtime NFL media man Mike Freeman wrote for USA Today, anyone who speaks and thinks this way shouldn't be part of a 21st century NFL franchise. Expressing a sort of glee about a player being poor, hungry, and desperate is quite the take. It's a line you'd expect to hear from Marty and Wendy Bird in Ozark. Prescott made these remarks during the draft. Brandon Faber, VP of Communications for the Bears, told USA Today on Monday that Prescott is no longer with the team. He said he could not provide information on whether Prescott was let go as part of the normal post-draft turnover process in the scouting department that is common with many teams, or whether Prescott's dismissal was due to his comments. But whatever the reasons, in a strange way, we should be grateful for Prescott. He pulled the curtain back and showed what some in the league truly think about players. There's still a significant swath of the league that sees players as cattle or worse as things. What I'm about to say isn't specifically about Prescott. It's more of a general statement. Part of the NFL see players as things that may have some elements of humanity, but not quite. Somewhere between a robot and a shell of a man. The black players are viewed as even less than that. There's almost an extra exponential downgrading of their humanity. Speaking with the Chicago Sun-Times, Jaquan Brisker said, I don't really let things like that get to me because I've already been through a whole lot. People say a lot of things, but that's not really who I am. You can't judge a book by its cover. I'm actually a great person, great football player, and I also graduated from college at Penn State. I overcame a lot of things, but I don't let little things like that get to me. Since his dismissal, the Bears have not spoken on the release, so it isn't clear whether he was dismissed for the comments or was the first to move in the restructuring of the scouting department. Either way, the team isn't likely to miss him. Prescott joined the team in 2016 and assumed the role of Northeast Area Scout while he helped them select players Players like Tariq Cohen and Bilal Nichols. He also had a direct hand in the disastrous Mitch Trubisky and Adam Shaheen picks in 2017. Maybe Pulse planned to get rid of him anyway, but the scout made that decision way easier with those comments, wrote Alec Lambert, to which I agree. Back to Freeman's column. The biggest problem with the NFL and college football is that both have for decades resisted efforts to treat players better, he wrote. They've been aided by a media that cheered on the more obscene violence in the sport and shouted down players and people who tried to make it safer. Talking about players the way Prescott did also shows a lack of respect for what it took for them to get there. If you look at Brisker's story, you see more than someone who was just poor. Awful announcings, Andrew Buckholtz concludes, it's perhaps somewhat understandable why front office personnel have an asset-focused view of players their own jobs tend to depend specifically on how the player performs for that team, not on whether they do good community work or anything else. But Freeman's point here about elements of humanity, but not quite, is valuable. It would be better if everyone involved the media to front office personnel considered prospects as full humanity at all times and did so beyond just their specific on-field value.